What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers promised titles that never got them. Hey, man, uh, it, it's an unfortunate situation where uh, sometimes a wrestler may be gaining some momentum uh, with the fans, and it looks like their next uh, opportunity is gonna be some type of title shot or some type of title opportunity, and it doesn't pan out. Maybe some unforeseen things happen uh behind the scenes or whatnot or backstage and it, it doesn't plan out or maybe that person unfortunately get injured these are things that happen you know a lot of, back then wrestling <clears throat> was really just right time right moment type of situation um and sometimes you can miss your moment because of an injury uh, and it, it, it kind of changes the landscape of your career potentially so we're gonna check this out Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. It's unthinkable that the likes of Mr. Perfect, Jake Roberts, Ted DiBiase, and so on never got the chance to reign with the WWE title. Which is but crazy. there's only so much space at the top of the card, and not everyone can have their go. But what about WWE stars that were not just considered for the belt, but were fingertips away from actually grabbing it? The history books would have been totally different if original plans had been seen to fruition. Yeah. I'm Cypher WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 WWE wrestlers promised titles that never got them. Number 10, Wade Barrett, WWE Ew. Championship. In 2010, the Nexus debuted on main Ooh. roster WWE TV and instantly became the leading story in the company due to their propensity for abject destruction. At the head of the table sat the charismatic Wade Barrett, who proved time and time again on the microphone that he was a born top heel. When the group was resoundingly beaten at Survivor Series by Team WWE, led by John Cena, who pushed backstage to come out on top, Barrett went on to two losses to then WWE Champion Randy Orton. If the Nexus had succeeded in their first major outing, would Barrett have been pushed to champion status? Rega it would have. It. You could have. You could have definitely worked with that. That was. That was probably, in hindsight, one of the worst decisions John Cena could have possibly made. Nexus needed that win. You, you're you trying to promote the future, you know, and, you know, it, it definitely could have benefited from them winning that important uh, match. It wasn't the only time that Barrett was put on track to major success. In 2011, it seemed that Wade was primed for a solid solo push. He had left the failing core stable, dropped the Intercontinental title, and was part of the Money in the Bank ladder match. In an interview with What Culture in 2016, Barrett revealed that not only had he been picked to win the briefcase, but they'd even rehearsed it. This was apparently Damn. changed an hour before the show. Considering that at this time nobody had failed to cash in, this very well could have been Barrett's redemption, but ultimately became yet another chance slipping through his fingers. Damn. Number 9. Alistair Black, United States Championship Whilst he had a palpable impact on NXT, Alistair Black's time on WWE's main roster never felt as though it got properly started before he was released. This According to Black, though, it wasn't as if the WWE writing room was ignoring him. They made plans, but most never amounted to much. Speaking on a live stream in 2020, Black revealed that there was a moment where he was supposed to win the US title. But then Vince's consensus was, I don't want to have him win his first title in front of no audience. It's hard to know if this move mm. was made out of genuine concern for Black's career, or perhaps as an excuse to to keep him away from establishing himself after i mean i i get it i get that but i mean titles i mean that would have been his first major title but i think it could have worked i mean you had nothing else to lose people were dropping and gaining titles throughout that period anyway so it's like what else do you have to lose he could use that momentum so i feel like it's like a it's an excuse, but it's a weak excuse. After all, whilst Paul Heyman was famously in favor of black skills, his heavily tattooed and death metal persona don't scream the hallmarks of a Vince McMahon project. Furthermore, this reasoning falls apart when you realize many first-time main roster champions, such as Drew McIntyre and Rhea Ripley, were crowned in front of the screens of WWE's Thunderdome. Fact. In fact, Zelina Vega, Black's wife, said in an appearance with the Chasing Glory podcast that he was due to win the title from her on-screen client Andrade. For the man who did so, Apollo Crews, it was his first title win, and it was with no crowd in attendance. Yeah. So, what gives? 
Number eight, Mohammed Hassan, World Heavyweight Definitely Championship. Heard about this one. Despite being on WWE television for less than a calendar year, Mohammed Hassan's controversial character saw him rise to notoriety. He was featured in segments alongside some of the biggest names in the business, such as Hogan, Stone Cold, and The Undertaker, which isn't a privilege that every rookie gets. It was going to get even bigger, however. With SummerSlam mm -hmm. looming that August, Vince wanted a heel for babyface World Heavyweight Champion Batista to drop the belt to, and at the time, there was no one attracting more heat than Hassan. Considering the event was to be held in Washington, D.C., not yeah. only the nation's capital, but also Batista's home city, it seemed like the perfect hot plate for a huge crowd reaction. However, Hassan's West and critical character jumped the shark when, after losing a number one contendership match to The Undertaker, he seemed to pray yeah. for the arrival of masked ne'er do wells. Unfortunately, this segment infamously aired on the evening of a real terrorist attack in London, which drew mass controversy to the company. The long and short of which saw Hassan's character written off TV and led to his eventual release. Yeah, the which is so crazy because obviously Vince approved that whole little segment, and you know, it's just the timing of it. It just kind of, you know, it. It, it didn't time up right. So you're doing this segment while an actual terrorist attack event happened. You know, it's like, uh, of course, advertisers was like, nope, nope. We don't want this. We don't want this at all. So it pretty much killed his character. And then he was kicked out of the company. We'll let go. The fact it didn't happen, it's plain to see that Hassan as champion was the direction the company had been heading. Number seven, Lacey Evans, Raw Women's Championship. I heard about On this paper, as well. Lacey Evans should be a can't miss babyface, a tall, blonde haired, blue eyed, all American with a rough background that she overcame to become a mother and a soldier for her country. And yet, these elements make crowds much more prone to boo her in that yeah. we get it, your oh so great kind of way. To top it off, a smug and vindictive Evans is just more entertaining to watch than seeing her attempt to be the overcoming all odds babyface. Evans found a twisted kind of momentum in January 2021 when she began to flirt and eventually enter an on-screen relationship with Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. Angering his daughter and WrestleMania mainstay Charlotte, this was all part of setting up a program that would take them both to the show of shows. If the personal vendetta wasn't enough, WWE had the two battle for contendership to Asuka's Raw Women's Championship. Lacey came out on top and the match was booked for Elimination Chamber. But just as quickly as it came, it was pulled from the card when the following week Evans revealed that she was legitimately pregnant. Had this not been the case, Evans would have captured her first title in WWE and defended it against Charlotte at WrestleMania 37 as the top heel. Number yep. 6, Ryback, WWE Championship. Oh boy. When you consider how fast the Feed Me More chance got over and the size of Ryback's big meaty neck muscles, <laughs> then it's not surprising that Vince was high on him. Facts. Quickly shot into the main event in his first year, it always seemed possible that Mr. McMahon was going to pull the trigger on Ryback one day. Apparently, it was at least dangled in front of the big guy around his last couple of years within the company. Talking to the Angle podcast, Ryback detailed that he lost his Intercontinental Championship because he didn't sign a contract extension that the WWE put in front of him. To get his John Hancock on the dotted line, Vince and Ryback verbally made some agreements. Mm. These included a heel turn, switching out the singlet for trunks, and a WWE Championship run, which Ryback then explained got demoted down to the US title and putting over Kalisto. You should always take what the big guy says with a pinch of salt. Vince mm. allegedly also promised that he'd let him squash AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Mm. But considering Vince's Arlo U1 reputation, this at least seems plausible. Number and five, thing, Bronson. And the thing about Ryback, I don't want to just, you know, go in and and uh, uh, down the guy. He's made some very questionable tweets and and has some very questionable comments. But I do feel like he's always had some legitimate reason to have some type of gripe with WWE. Granted, he does go a little bit overboard in my opinion sometimes, but. I understand. I'm sure they probably promised him a lot of things, and then they didn't uh, up, they didn't uphold their end of the deal. So I can see that happening, and that could be frustrating. So I I get somewhat of how he feels, but at the same time, it's been so long. It's like you at some point you gotta move forward and let that go. You know what I'm saying? Or you're just gonna continuously be in that perpetual loop of you know just wishing for someone's downfall and being able to kind of laugh at it and it doesn't really make you look any better because like well if that's the case you shouldn't have been with wwe from the jump you know what i'm saying but hey it's 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 one of those type of things hopefully hopefully he can just you know move forward and let 
let the the past be the past. Read NXT Championship. Despite feeling like its own little pocket universe, which is often meticulously designed, especially uh -huh. during its better, blacker, and golder years, NXT is still a wrestling promotion. That means all kind of different story ideas and considerations are taken into account, and just like main roster WWE, some of these possibilities apparently get passed on to the stars that concern them. Appearing on Sammy Callahan's podcast, former NXT star Bronson Reed said that he was still intent on becoming a top guy in the world of pro wrestling, and that had been Triple H's intentions for him. In the words of the now Jonah Rock, I was destined to become the top guy in the black and gold brand. That's what was supposed to happen. Mm. It was what I was promised. But as we all know, promises don't get kept a lot yeah. in professional wrestling. Reed doesn't mention a world championship run explicitly, but what else could he mean? There's no spot greater in NXT than holding on to the title, which, despite its standing as a developmental brand, has a seriously impressive lineage. That's... Every man who has ever held it has made something of himself in WWE and or elsewhere, and yeah. it would have done wonders for Reed. Instead, he was unceremoniously released in August 2021 yeah. before his destiny could be fulfilled. Number four, Mr. Mr. Kennedy, Ken oh, World yeah. Heavyweight Championship. He, when Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy, he he was supposed to be the next guy up. He had he had the the, the promo ability, the in ring work wasn't that bad. He had the gimmick. He was supposed to be the next guy up, but you know things happen. <laughs> Backstage politics are real. Kennedy arrived in WWE, it was immediately clear that the company was getting behind him for good reason. He had a strong look, he was solid in the ring, and he had unteachable charisma. Yeah. As such, it wasn't really surprising that Mr. Kennedy got his hands on the Money in the Bank briefcase when he did. Considering that previous winners, Edge and Rob Van Dam, had both successfully traded the case for a championship, it was obvious that WWE yeah, had was, designs to do the same up. for Kennedy. With the Mr. McMahon's exploding limo story occurring that summer, and Kennedy vowing to cash in at WrestleMania, the company's vision for the following year was Shane McMahon as on-screen CEO, and a newly crowned Mr. Kennedy as champion. However, Kennedy's time in WWE can be defined as pure distilled bad luck. Seriously, yeah. you could have bottled essence of Mr. Kennedy and sold it as a curse for your worst enemies. A suspected injury, which turned out to be a hematoma, forced Kennedy to defend and lose the briefcase to Edge, who would go on to successfully cash in. And with the very real Benoit tragedy putting a stop to Mr. McMahon's fake death, the plans mm -hmm. fell to pieces. Continued suspension saw Kennedy slip down the card before his release, leaving him to find world title success in TNA instead. Number 3. China WWF Championship Recipe China, China, despite being WWF Women's Champion only once, remains one of the most important women in WWE history. Yeah. She turned the tide on what women's characters could be and the involvement of female stars in men's spaces as she routinely got physical with her male colleagues. Most memorably, of course, she was the first woman to enter she the... Was the embodiment of Eagle Rise Eagle Fights for show. The Royal Rumble and King of the Ring Tournament, and is still the only woman to hold the Intercontinental Championship. Which is wild. She was also the first woman to become number one contender for the WWF <laughs> Championship, but lost the opportunity and never made it to the match itself. However, that wasn't China's only brush with the company's biggest prize. China's former manager, Anthony Anzaldo, confirmed in 2020, claims that the star had made herself that Vince once offered her the belt in exchange for one favor. In Anzaldo's words, they offered her the WWE Championship belt, but Vince said, you can't do Playboy. She chose Playboy over oh. the belt. This decision made her a star in her own- Wow, I forgot she did Playboy. That's crazy. I still don't see Vince giving her the fucking WWE. Well, you know what? Maybe. Maybe like a one night, maybe a, like a one week situation. She hosts the championship. I could see that. I take that back. I could see that. But, uh, yeah, I- that's crazy. She did uh did do Playboy, you know. And right for a short time, but may have burned bridges with the WWE for good. China's foray into adult entertainment following her Playboy appearances are often suspected as one reason why she still hasn't had her own independent Hall of Fame induction. Yeah. Number two, William Regal, WWE Championship. In 2008, Regal shocked the world by winning the King of the Ring tournament, slumping into his throne at the end of the night with a malicious look on his face. Combining the coronation as king with his general manager role, Regal would describe himself as the most powerful entity in the WWE. Proving his hunger for control and respect, in a particularly memorable episode of Raw, Regal <laughs> screamed at Kevin Dunn to take the show off the bloody air due to feeling slighted by WWE fans. It was shocking and fresh, and best of all, it's widely believed that Regal's previous in-ring 
in-ring dalliances with Randy Orton and Triple H were going to put him in contention for the WWE title until Regal was kayfabe fired due to a wellness policy violation. Whilst never outright written in stone, all Regal needed to do was keep up the momentum of his character. Yeah. He was hated by WWE fans in the best way, and putting the title around his waist for the first time ever would have been the right move. Regal himself has admitted that he was studying dictators, so we can only wonder how creatively wicked he could have gotten reigning the show as oh, Bob. I, I'm not going to lie to you. He was getting some good heel heat. Bro, he... He is, is something about his pretentious, I'm better than you, you should worship me attitude that people just love to hate. Now, if he's overseas in the UK, oh, fans are going to love him. But in the States, oh, no, nah, they would have booed. They were booing him. So him as the top champ would have been a... Would have been a pretty good look for him. Boss, king, and champion. However, with a very real 60-day suspension for the Brits, the storyline vanished into thin air, and yeah. so did the chances of Regal ever being WWE champion. Yeah. Number one, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, WWF Intercontinental Championship. Now, this I don't know when it comes about. to WWF's most memorable characters from the 1980s, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is amongst them. With his garden sheer prop, hair-obsessed gimmick, and bright presentation, he's one of the superstars that casual or lapsed fans from the era are quickest to name. And yet, the only title he ever won was the WWF Tag Team Championship. That wasn't always the plan, however, but life got in the way of Brutus's ascension to mid-card gold. At the turn of the decade, brother Bruti was engaged in a hot feud with Mr. Perfect and got the honour of being the first man in the company to pin Kurt Hennig during their WrestleMania 6 bout. Mm. From here, the plan was to take their story to the next level. They spent months on the house show circuit honing their perfect match, with the intended conclusion that Beefcake would beat Perfect at some Slam 1991 for the Intercontinental Championship. However, Beefcake's famous accident involving a parasailing friend put this ascension to champion to rest, oh. as the star had to have life-altering surgery and took two years away from the yeah. business. According to Brutus, the company had toyed with the idea of giving him the strap multiple times over the 1980s, and this would have been a sure thing if not for this almost career-ending injury. And that's Damn. the list. Let us know what you thought of this video. Down that's, that's tough. That is, that's actually kind of tough, bro. This is why I was saying at the beginning of the video, sometimes there's those situations where, um, unfortunate situations where you may have, you may suffer injury and now your push is derailed and you probably may not get it back. You know, two years is a long time and people can forget you. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you guys are seeing the glitching right now. My OBS is tripping, so... I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to go ahead and try to end this video for it just completely implodes, man. So comment down below. Let me know any individual y'all feel like deserved a, a major title, uh, title shot opportunity, but you felt like their push got derailed, man. Let me know down below. I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace. I don't know what's going on with OBS. Why it's glitching like that. So sorry, y'all. <laughs>